Welcome to our show today, the ladies exclusive with Roxy and Velma. Now today we'll be discussing the film industry of our decade, its stars, its stories, and the many changes it has undergone. We dedicate this program to the illustrious Rudolf Valentino, whose death occurred exactly two years ago today. One of the great actors of our time, Valentino is often placed beside the most celebrated entertainers of our decade, including Buster Keaton, Claudette Colbert, Norma Shearer, Greta Garbo, and the ever-hilarious Charlie Chaplin. Valentino began his acting career as the star of The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, which quickly became one of the highest-grossing silent films ever made. He never did get the opportunity to venture into talking pictures as he eventually met his death, leaving us to question the nature and timbre of his God-given voice. Found collapsed in his hotel room, Valentino was rushed to the hospital and treated for his ruptured appendix. He died on August 23, 1926, just hours after the surgery. The great tragedy of this event was reflected in the response from its dedicated fans. Over 100,000 people gathered. The line to pass his coffin covered blocks, and the procession lasted days. The Polish actress, Pola Negri, who had, who'd been having an affair with Valentino, fainted over his coffin. Women in distress took their own lives, unable to deal with the loss of his. Valentino's body traveled to the West Coast on a funeral train, and he was buried in Hollywood. Never has such dedication been seen for a celebrity. Arguably the perfect embodiment of manhood, his elegant style, delicate nature, and enchanting persona will always be missed. Now, with the power of radio, we bring to you the last recordings of the great Rudolf Valentino. Now is a great time to mention our generous sponsor in the industry since the beginning, Kodak Eastman. This year we are saying bon voyage to the autographic camera with coupled rangefinder and a 3A panorama, capable of shooting views in 100 degrees of clarity. You will be dearly missed by the artists and photographic connoisseurs, but these fabulous newcomers ensure a depth of detail that will delight the whole of America. You will find yourself in disbelief. The future of photography is here. With the pocket Kodak special cameras, capturing those swinging nights in Harlem with the gals, or just snapping one of a handsome fellow, will be as easy as reaching into your purse for a light. Yes, ladies, the pocket camera folds up and is as compact as your compact. Not to mention, this Series 2 pocket camera comes in four different colors using 130mm film. So forget fitting your purse, it will match your outfit as well for only $25. And if you dream of the Series 1 but have a more conservative budget, have no worries, for you can purchase this 116mm $70 artistic tool in a series of seven $10 installments. And if these sound like luxury, you won't believe the next model, the Kodak Vanity. $30 using 127mm film and with matching case comes in an assembly with a $10 discount, which includes Richard Hudnett lipstick, compact mirror, and change pocket. This also comes in a variety of colors, beige, gray, and green. Speaking of photographs, let's focus again on film and the humble beginnings from which our nation's lover, Valentino, could appear to us all in a moving picture. From the very conception of film, daguerre and earlier plate exposures, the concept of mimicking reality has been a motive worthy of a century of thinkers. Beginning across the Atlantic and with Germany's perfection of the 35mm camera just three years past, photojournalism began giving us narrative, emotion, and story to pictures. Americans like Edison, Kodak, and Eastman have become the iconic figures in the history of the photograph, elevating this process to be accessible to the masses. Eventually, projectors refined with sewing machine mechanisms to make the spools run smoothly broadcasted this medium to the masses again. Lumiere frightened audiences with a train, a simple train that seemed too real to be anything else. Just 14 years ago in 1914 was the first ever feature-length film, Tilly's Punctured Romance, and introduced the splendid comedic actor Charlie Chaplin to the nation. But just last year, the Vitaphone, GE's Phonophone, and William Fox's Movie Tone have expanded our world once again with the luxury of sound in film, leading us to the creation of Lights of New York, which will be the landmark feature with a complete incorporation of sound throughout. It premieres this year. From silence to talkies, the American can experience the wider person of a character, though not terribly beneficial to our good friend John Gilbert, who sounds disappointingly similar to the voices of his female fans. However, Greta Garbo's exotic accent proves the possibilities for the evolved medium we all love, and these recent strides in entertainment and art foreshadow a greater future for film. Who knows, maybe we will eventually see color film. But take it from Al Johnson, as he said in the first talkie, Don Juan. Wait a minute, you ain't seen nothing yet. Now, film and the city. Movie going is not exclusive to city life. In fact, nearly every small town now has its own theater, and more and more are being built in rural areas every day. 
So what gives the movie industry set in Metropolis life such a strong association? Many argue it's the grandeur applied to movie-going in urban areas. Venues such as the Uptown Theater in Chicago, Grauman's Egyptian in Los Angeles, and New York City's Roxy. These outstanding venues may be few in number, but they are in the most broadcasted places and advertise a cinematic grandeur absent in rural theaters. And we can't forget to mention the overall glamour of Hollywood as a contributor to these ideas. But before we continue, here's a quick word from our sponsor, Warner Brothers Pictures. Looking for an exciting weekend? Make an appointment with Scandal. Join the tragically beautiful Helene Costello and the deceptively charming Colin Landis on a thrilling adventure full of love, crime, and constant uncertainty. Stop into your local movie house to witness for yourself the truth behind the lights of New York and experience Warner Brothers' first ever talking motion picture using 20th century dual synchronized record film technology. I plan to see Lights of New York for the third time this weekend with my niece. And how? Elena is such a beer cat. Oh, you're all wet. I loved it. It's just remarkable. I don't understand how they managed to mimic reality so accurately. The voices synchronized with the moving image are like magic. Speaking of talkies, this new era of film is taking its toll on Hollywood. That's right, some of the greatest silent film stars are already starting to have trouble finding work. Apparently, not all their voices are up to par with their acting. And Broadway shows have already started canceling their national tours. It seems talkies are stealing away audiences with their superiorly lavish costuming and budgets. But I wouldn't worry. Multiple critics I've been hearing express their opinions that talkies are just going to be a trend and that the language barrier will be the downfall. So while some horizons expand, others diminish. This may be the last Warner Brothers film where they're free to express whatever they want. That's right, William H. Hayes, president of the Motion Picture Producers and Distributors of America, is pushing to enforce what he calls the Motion Picture Production Code, better known as Hayes Code. The establishment of this code would restrict film and its ability to challenge conventional norms, display sexual behavior, innuendo, and interactions with alcohol, although it would ensure safe content for children. It is currently being discussed by a committee of studio executives. As it stands now, I can tell you I don't think William Wellman will be very happy. Yes, and Oscar Michaud. For those of you who don't know, Oscar Michaud is one of the most progressive filmmakers of our time, being one of the only black filmmakers out there. His film Body and Soul was widely ridiculed for its negative portrayal of the clergy in the face of widespread Christian fundamentalism and evangelical preachers. His boldness in the release of this film has labeled him among the more controversial of filmmakers. Well, we'll let you think on that the next time you go to the movie house. Join us next week for an exclusive interview with Mama Morrison, warden of the local woman's prison, for an inside scoop on the development of the Kelly Hart scandals. A quick thank you to our sponsors, Kodak Eastman, Eastman and Warner Brothers Industry, for their support and contribution to the arts. Until next time, this is Velma and Roxy. Mm -hmm.